In 2018 was the initial progression-free survival analysis, and that's what led to the um, uh, EMA and FDA approvals of the drug for this. And in that study, they showed a 70% reduction in the risk of progression or death um, in the maintenance olaparib arm versus the placebo arm. Um, at that time, the median progression-free survival wasn't reached yet, and the olaparib arm, an updated survival analysis was done at five years after last patient randomized. And that one, we found that the median progression-free survival was 56 months compared to just 13 in the uh, control arm. So a, a big difference, that reduction in progression and death was still seen. So that hazard ratio was of the same uh, caliber as it was in the first report. So this study is basically grew out of the knowledge we gained about early phase trials with PARP inhibitors, that these PARP inhibitors, class of drugs, uh, work especially well in, in women with advanced ovarian cancer who had a BRCA mutation. And so through that, you began to see the development of phase two, phase three trials, later lines of chemotherapy. And SOLO1 really was, how do we get this into the front line where we think we can make our greatest impact? And so that's really was the genesis of this trial, was to take that class of drugs known to be efficacious in a subset of women with ovarian cancer and provide that to them in a randomized trial. So we're, this one, we do a descriptive analysis of overall survival. And so in this particular instance, we picked a seven-year descriptive time point to do this assessment. The trial has overall survival as a secondary endpoint, but it's requiring a certain number of events or data maturity, and, and that's set at 60%. We're at nowhere near that yet. And so um, in this study, in this um, presentation, we looked at the seven-year time point, which um, is a clinically meaningful time point in ovarian cancer survival. It's a, point in time where people have done analyses and shown that the instance of death for people, for women who have ovarian cancer, relative to the instance of death for just the general population is very close. So it's, so a lot of your risk of death has already gone by. And so in this trial, we looked at that particular uh, time point. And so, um, and that was really the genesis of what we spoke about. So we found a uh, literally clinically meaningful benefit. And so the median overall survival for the, the uh, maintenance of laparib arm hasn't been reached yet. Overall survival median for the placebo arm was 75 months, so the hazard ratio is 0.55, so a 45% reduction in the risk of death at seven years out, so really compelling data for us. When we talk about statistical significance, um, from a statistical perspective, we did something called an alpha spend, and so it's a, it's a way to take a look at data without ultimately compromising your final endpoint, and so the, the p-value had to be extremely rigorous in order to pass muster. So our p-value, although profound at 0 0.0004, was not technically statistically significant. But if you look at the clinical meaning, 67% of women were alive seven years after diagnosis in the study who were on the maintenance olaparib arm versus 45% in the placebo arm. So to us, really meaningful and compelling data. Really, it's just another message that PARP inhibition, and specifically in this case, olaparib, in the setting of women with advanced ovarian cancer in a BRCA1 or 2 mutation, has a clinical meaning, in, meaningful impact on their survival. I mean, true survival. And that's, it, it just drives home the fact that today in 2022, when we practice ovarian cancer medicine, we need to know the germline status of our patients. We need to know, is there a somatic mutation in a tumor? Because finding this integral or predictive biomarker is incredibly important for that population. And you have a drug targeted to that that can enhance their survival.